So it's your boy Downsize and I'm back once again on my block with another hood classic. Uh, this one right here is to answer a question by the homie Tiger uh, who dropped me a question in the comments and asked, do I believe or do I think that um that that the juvenile justice system is too harsh on, on the youth? Um, in my instance, in my case, yes. Okay, it's complicated, right? The issue itself is complicated. Not in my case, but in generally speaking, because the laws in each state are different, right? California has a completely different uh, uh, judicial system that doesn't really make no sense. Like their judicial system in California does not make much sense the way they, the way, the way they punish crime in California, it doesn't, it, I mean, all of the programming that they have there, that's really good, but it's just the 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 their penal code is is shot. They anyway, I brought that up because you know each state is different in how you know how we deal with juveniles, right? Okay, here in the state of Arizona now, um, if a juvenile commits a violent crime, they're automatically sent to the county jail. They go straight to the county jail. There's, they don't go into the juvenile system. There's no remand hearings like in my case. And when I went to court, when I was a juvenile, um, they go straight to the county jail. Gun charge, anything like that, they're going straight to the county jail. Now, this change in the law occurs in 1993 over, over cases like my own and others who had really high profile, um, um, especially... Uh, murder cases and there were some especially heinous murder cases committed by juveniles during that time and we were we were hell bent on proving to the world we were the worst and we were hell bent on making names for ourselves that rang through throughout so okay now that's to speak of the hardened criminals that we were as juveniles not to brag or boast you know i've spoken about my history before so i'm not trying to get into that um as it pertains to the specifics of my case right my attorney gary peter clark um negotiated with the state to keep me in the juvenile justice system keep me out of doby mountain until i was 18 and then be, being the nature of my offense i would have to uh i would go straight into the army like i would i would go straight into the army right okay but they were going to pilot a program, an ROTC inside out basic training program that that they can go um, from basic training to advanced training uh, in one cot in one or two cottages. Right. Where where, you know, people like myself who would end up having to stay there because of the crimes that we committed. You know, what I mean, like in my case, I had 33 felony charges. So what my attorney proposed was uh, C7, C726 charges. C7 means that, that they drop them, but they can bring them up at any time during the, during my, so long as I'm under 18, right? So they can bring them back up. They can bring up the whole remand, remand and, and I would have to sign to um, an automatic remand. I would have to sign to it, okay? And then they would pilot a program, an ROTC program that was basic to advanced training. You know what I mean? And you have to understand that in the military training, there is there is a high level of intelligence that's involved in all of the training. It's all intelligence training, no matter what. Even the most basic fundamental of training where, you're, where they're shaving people's heads off and the way they go through it, there, there, there is intelligence employed when they do these things. They do it for a reason. You see what I'm saying? So, um, okay, that's at a secured facility, right? Where you would have all of it, bro. We would have everything that's ROTC there. So everything that, you know, goes with an ROTC program in school would be there, right? Um, and then and then for those that, that, that could be released, you know what I mean? Or that would be released and you would release some that that they would go into a transitionary home. They would go into 
replacement homes that were ran by the same, that the military would run the same. You see what I'm saying? So that so that there is no no child left behind, truly. You know what I mean? That there are those people that will be there for them through and through. You know what I mean? Um, to help them back, you know, when they get into society to, you know, they would have to go into an ROTC program. And, you know what I mean? You, 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 you ensure a greater chance for success by doing this. You know what I mean? You, you ensure a far greater chance for success. I don't know where that's coming from. But, um, but, um, you know, and I know this because like myself, while I was in prison, uh, doing them 10 years, the 12 years from the mob robbery, um, I mentored several people, many people actually. And those that I took a special interest in, um, they, they got out. None of them went back to prison. None of them ever went back to prison and all of them. All of them got out and, you know, tapped in with my mom and, and blessed my mom. And, you know, there was those that stayed in touch with me and, and um, um, you know, my homie, my homie fucking rest in peace. Uh, Yao, Tony Moya from San Gabriel, he, um, you know, took me in and everything. So, <clears throat> you know, when you when you when you give more of yourself to you to show that that, you know, you, you can be trusted. You know what I mean? That you can, that you're not going to let them, you're not going to let them fail because this is the problem that when we're in those situations, we don't trust. We don't have no confidence that anybody's hearing us, that anybody's going to do anything for us. We don't know how to necessarily articulate what we're thinking and feeling, you know, in the right way to really, truly, uh, um, you know, to, to express remorse when we do. You know what I mean? And there's a tendency because we act out and we don't know how to show these emotions that we're labeled things that we're not. And these things are destructive. These things are very destructive to a child. When you're labeling them things that they don't understand and you and you can possibly be wrong. And in my case, to this date, I've proven them wrong. I've proven, I've proven them wrong every label they've applied to me. I've been able to, regardless of how those classifications fit, I've been able to recover and, and be healed from all of it, right? So there's a, an, there is an example in myself that demonstrates that, you know, even in the long run where they give up on me as a kid, that, you know, 30 plus years later, I can still make a way out for myself, right? Um... So, because there is such a lack of resources and such a, 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 a commitment to the youth, as I just demonstrated, like that would be, that would cost a lot. So, but I'm willing to pay for it as a taxpayer. Um, but I know, I truly believe from, for myself, I truly believe that it would, it would be a success. I know based on who and what I am and those pe those homies that were there with me, I know well all of us um that I think that the mo that the whole lot of us would have took to it really well, man. I think that that that's what we needed. You know, I I can picture some of us being in a cottage like that the they got transferred and how, you know, we were we were leaders in all leaders in our own rights in our own hoods and and so and so um you know we were prone to doing the same there in that environment because i remember um mr lopez he was he was army um and i remember he 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 taught us to march because we used to have to march and do flag and stuff like that at adobe mound um, and so like he taught us some, some cadences and everything. And we used to come through there stomping and dragging our feet. <laughs> that shit just sound tough, bro. Coming through them cottages, banging it out. And we used to come up with these cold ass cadences, banging it out. We used to feel good about that, bro. And I think about these things and I, and I, and I say that like all of this stuff would work, bro. Like 
like like a uh, um like stomping the yard those type of those type of um uh, uh, um, um, competitions in those type of environments, you know what I mean? But where it's controlled, where you got people militarily trained, you know, with special forces type training to, 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 to discipline, you know, teach and train the youth that are at risk like myself. Now, do I believe it is harsh? Yes, bro. I believe that there's no consideration to how we're treating the youth. So that's what makes it so cruel and unusual that that they don't know any better. That these that these that these professionals and professors and whatnot that they can't accept that they're wrong in this instance. That that there's a lot of literature that that's proven to be wrong in in how we're treating the youth as far as being criminals, as far as criminal activity. You know what I mean? And see, like. You know, I say we're like an unruly kid, right? A kid before it gets to, you know, a kid in a rebellion, they, before it gets to that point where it's locked up and stuff like that, and you have to go through that. I'm of, I'm of the belief that I'll take you out. I'll take you out to the wilderness, leave you by a creek, give you, give you a compass and, and, and backpack and everything you need to make it back. You're going to have to make it back on your own. You know, you, you, you sink or swim. If you're going to be, if you're going to be in such rebellion that you feel as my child, you can, you know what I mean? You're going to, you're going to be in my face with it like that. You're going to defy me. Well, then I'm going to take you out and I'm going to leave you out there. Yeah, let's see. You make it back. Now I say the same I told, I told, I told my cousin one time about her daughter. And I'm listening to this shit going on and on in the background. Like, do you really allow this kid to talk to you like that? This, this is crazy, man. But it, it was the same. This cycle repeating itself, only worse. I, I, I witnessed the same cycle repeating itself, only worse. So, and I'm telling her, she's like, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, dude, I would take her right now. I would get somebody, right? To, 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 to 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 uh follow so you can have somebody already stationed waiting take her out to the desert drop her off drive away just drive away you got somebody there watching she don't know drop her off and leave separate yourself from mercy sounds cruel but if nothing else will work, you need to frighten them to death. Shocking experience. You know, it's a thing that 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 rubbed it, it even rubbed me wrong to say that because what I suffer from as far as PTSD and what I know many children suffer from because of how, how harsh life is, bro, how, how traumatizing life is. And people don't understand the sensitivities of a child and how even yelling, snapping at a kid and calling them all kinds of, how that is traumatic and how that can and does cause PTSD. You know I mean, so there's a there's a far bigger picture and I do believe that yeah, we don't we're not there's not enough consideration given to how we're actually treating the youth in the our justice system, our criminal justice system here. And I but I think that sending them to prison like that without a greater consideration and without a greater, you know, without without giving them greater opportunity and chances to succeed, you know, that's why juveniles can't be sentenced to death or life no more. You know what I mean? For that very reason, they don't, we don't know no better. We don't. I know I didn't know no better. And what got me transferred, I'm going to end with this. What got me, you have to understand, is, yeah, the nature of the offenses, right? And what everything they're trying to charge me for. But it was my intelligence. First, they said the nature of the offense, and then my intelligence. They believed that I knew better, and they believed that I was leading everyone down that same path. You know what I mean? So... You know, if there's nothing else for me, right, like, because they, they, the state wouldn't negotiate and make that deal with me, what other option did they have? 
it's not likely, you know, I have to admit to myself right now and to the viewing audience that I would not have changed otherwise. I think that that's the only thing that could have changed me. If, if, if they had left me in that juvenile system, I was hell bent on getting out and doing something totally different. The only thing that could have saved me was going into the military. And I wanted that so bad, bro. But I'm going to end with that. So, um, yeah, bro, there'll be more. I'm going I'm to drop some more videos today on the subject of, of juveniles and the justice system and speaking more to the effects um, that it's all had on me personally and what I know it's affecting other people so we have a better understanding of it. So I appreciate you, Brother Tiger, man. Um, yeah, keep them comments, keep them questions coming, man. That's what... That's what's that's what's moving us that's what's moving us down the road here. You know, them really good questions, man. Um y'all speak more to it. Um Yeah, man, great question. Peace! I'm out.